isn't it possible once you figure out the origin of life that that's not going to solve, um, that's not actually going to solve the question of what is life? Like, is, is, isn't it? Because you're kind of putting so. a lot of. Yeah, I think they're the same problem. But you're, you're putting, is it possible that you're putting too many, um, too much bets into this origin part? Maybe the origin thing isn't. Isn't there always a turtle underneath the turtle? Isn't it a stack well, of turtles? Because then if you create it in the lab, maybe you need some other stuff. Happening. Well, let's not think about the origin. Like, just... you, 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 like in the lab, there's still memory. Yeah. Yes. Right. The experiment is already the product of evolution. Right. In some maybe really deep way, not an obvious yes, way, in some very exactly. deep way. Yeah. So maybe uh, the haters are always going to be like, well... You have to reconstruct the fold. You have to build it from scratch. Fortunately for us, the haters are not aware of that argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I know. I just, We're the one making that argument usually. But, I, mean, yeah. I, I just think that if we create life in the lab, oh, it's no. not obvious that you'll get to the deep, deep understanding of necessarily um, well, what is the line between life and non-life. No, I think so. Let, well, there's so much here. I'm just like so, uh, playing devil. So much here. But let me play devil's advocate back in a previous conversation right and say um uh yeah i will why not why not yeah, we've got time let's go cellular automata yes cellular automata these these very very um simple things where you color squares um black or white and implement rules and play them in time and you can get these very very complex patterns coming out you know there's nice rules there are cheering complete rules and um and um I would argue that cellular automata are that are don't really exist on their own. They have to exist on a in a computing device. If that whether that computing device is a piece of paper, an abstraction, a mathematician drawing a grid, or um, a a a framework. Now, so I would argue so CAs are beautiful things, simple, going complex, but the complexity is all borrowed from the lithography, the not numbers. Right now, let's take that same argument with the um, the chemistry experiment origin of life. Cat, what you need to be able to do is go, and I'm inspired to do this, to go out and look for CAs occur in nature. You know, let's kind of let's find some um, some CAs that, that just emerge in our universe. And uh, for people, just so to interrupt, for people um, just listening, and in general, I think what we're looking at um, is a cellular automata. Where again, as Lee described, there is just binary black or white squ uh, squares, and they only have local information, and they they're born and they die, and you would think nothing interesting would emerge, but actually, what we're looking at is something that I believe is called glider guns, yeah. uh, or or a glider gun, which is uh, moving objects in this multi-cell space that look like they're organisms that have much more information, that have much more complexity than the individual building components in, a, in fact look like they have a long-term memory uh so, well while, while the individual components don't seem like they have any memory at all yes yeah, so the, ar the argument here is um that has to exist on a, all this layer of infrastructure right and though it looks simple and then what i would make the argument i would make if i were you say well i, I think cas are really simple and everywhere is say show me how they emerge in a substrate now let's go to the origin of life where or machine I don't think we, we want to do the origin of life. Just any origin is good. So what we do is we literally have our sand shaker. Sh shake the sand like massive grid of chemistry experiments. Shaking sand, shaking whatever. And then because we know what we've put in, so we know where, how we've cheated. In the same way with CA, we know how we've cheated. We know, what the micro, we know the number of operations needed. We know how big a grid we want to get this. If we could then say, okay, how can we um, generate this recipe in the lab and make a life form? what were the what contingency did we need to put in and we're upfront about how we cheated okay say oh you had to shake it it was a periodic planet rotates it's tried comes in and out so and then we can start to basically say okay how difficult is it for these features to be found and then we can look for exoplanets and other features so I think Sarah's absolutely right. We want to explain to people we're cheating. In fact, we have to cheat. No one has given... I'm, I'm good at writing grants, or I used to be. I'm not very good right now. I keep getting rejected. But I, writing a grant for a planet in 100 million years, no grant fund there is going to give me that. But maybe money to make a, a kind of a grid, a computer grid, 
origin of life computer in physical grid, space in physical space and just do it well, so sarah said something which is you can't simulate the origin of life in a in a computer so like in simulation why not what 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 are your because you said it very confidently so yeah. is it possible and why would it be very difficult like what's um, your intuition there i think it's very difficult right now because we don't know the physics, but if you go based on principles of assembly theory and you think every molecule is actually a very large causal graph, not just the molecule, then you have to simulate all the features of those causal graphs. And I think it becomes computationally intractable. You might as well just build the experiment. Uh, because you have, in the physical space, you have all the objects with all the memories. Yes. You, and in the computer, you would have to yes. copy them or reconstruct them. Yes. Yeah. It's, that's a beautifully put. And I would say that Lots of people, you, you you just don't have enough resource. It's 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 easier to actually do the physical experiment because the, the, the we are literally. I would view the physical experiment almost mm -hmm. like a computational experiment. We're just outsourcing. It's just basically we're just right. outsourcing all the matrix and I, <laughs> algebra. On your, on your point about the experiment being also an example of life, it's almost like you want to design. It's like you know, all of us are. Um, lineages of propagating information across time. And so everything we do becomes part of life because it's part of that causal chain. So it's like you want to try to pinch off as much as you can of the information from your causal chain that goes into the experiment, but you can't pinch off all of it to move it to like a different timeline. It's always going to be part of your timeline. But at least if you can control how much information you put in, you can try to see how much does that particular trajectory you set up start generating its own assembly. So you, you, you know where it starts, and then you want to try to see it take off on its own when you try to pinch it off as much as possible.